Hi everyone, it's Gail. Uh, and welcome back to another Mixed Media May session. We are going to turn ugly scrapbook paper or or let's just more gently say not your style of scrapbook paper into something you will actually use. So we're gonna do that today. Um, first, let me say hi and hugs to Joe, Tana, Deidre, and Scribe Vibes. Thanks so much for watching and for your comments. And let's get started. This is so fun and it's messy, so that's gonna be fun too. So here are some pieces of scrapbook paper that I've done already. And I think once we, once I show you the technique, we'll play with these a little bit and make some stuff out of them. But um, this was, I think, just a piece of purple cardstock is what it was that turned into this. And then this one, all nice and red. The back was just white. One side is um, scrapbooking paper. Love this one. Love those colors so much. You know that. And then this one. And wait till you feel that, or, or wait till you feel. Well, I'll show you how we get the texture um, because they're bumpy. They're bumpy. They're they're fun and they're bumpy. Look at how fun that is. Oh my gosh! Might have to go grab my purple after looking at that one. And then this one, and this one. Love this one. And then here's the same uh, stencil, but different colors. And this one, I just lightly coated on the back. And so some of the pattern came through. So anyway, these are some of the ones that I've made over the years. Um, I used to teach a class on altering papers. And this was, this was one of the things that we did. I'm loving that one. Okay, we're going to make some stuff out of that in a minute. But let me show you how, how to do it. So I have this piece of paper. My, my sweet friend Renee sent that as one of my thank you papers when I got my Jane's Memoir papers. And it's just not my style. I, I just, I won't use it in its current state. So... And then the back is this. So let's get started. I'm going to back you out a little bit. I want you to be able to see those papers up close, but I'm going to back you out a little bit just so I have a little more room to work too. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we are going to gesso this. We are just going to paint gesso over the top of this. So hopefully my gesso will come out better than it did the other day. I can see I'm going to have to invest in maybe a little more gesso. Oh, there we go. That's that's all good. That's all good. And I have a big brush because um, there's a lot, you know, there's 12 by 12 area to cover. So um, this way it goes a little quicker. Got a few, a few goobers. Once again, I've got my drop cloths behind, and um, we are going to have a project one of these first days with those. But So I am having a great day. <laughs> it's going to be warm here. It's going to be um, knocking on 80 degrees here today. And so um, I got up this morning, got myself ready and I went out and did a tub of coffee dyed papers so I'm quite thrilled I'm like yes because you know I haven't done that all winter because well I did do a little bit I take that back I did a little bit in the tub um I did I coffee dyed some of the um papers for my cinch journal and um I just <laughs> my I'm in the basement and so my heat vent is in the ceiling so I just stuck them under my heat vent and it worked just fine but you know I love being out in the sunshine Jimmy Joe came out and helped me <laughs> yeah using the term help 
quite loosely there. Jimmy Joe came out and got under my feet. <laughs> but that's okay. Ugh, that's a goober too. Okay. So we got that all gessoed. There we go. This is going to be cool because the square pattern is going to be kind of cool um, underneath, I think. Okay, so we're going to let that dry. I'm going to get myself a little water and put in there. Um, let's see. Sorry, guys. I have to go on the other side of my table here to get a little water. This is my water for my, <laughs> this is my water for my craft room. I just um, fill up this gallon jug and then I can use it for my, uh, for my diffuser and for brushes. Okay. Okay, we'll let that sit. We'll put that over there because we don't need that. Okay, I did um, I did bring my heat gun, got it going. So close your ears, take out your earphones, fast forward, whatever, but I want this gesso to get dry quick. So just going to hit it a little bit. And I put a, a pretty generous coat of gesso on this. And you guys, I just use gesso from Walmart. It's just cheapo gesso, and it's, I like it. It does fine. So, still tacky. As the gesso dries, the pattern of the paper's coming through a little bit more, but that's okay. We'll be covering it up here in a second. There, that's probably, probably good enough or close to good enough. This was a nice thick paper, so this is going to turn out great, I think. Okay, a um, little gesso right there. <laughs> And I want to get my grits off of this paper because I want to use this paper for something else. Okay. So then the next thing is we are going to put a stencil on this. And um, I am going to use the stencil that I did this paper with. I just grabbed one out just for demonstration purposes, you know. So I'm just gonna pop that in the middle. I'm, I'm looking at it, deciding, do I wanna do something around the edges? I'm not gonna worry about it. I think I'm just gonna pop it in the middle, like so. And my, my gesso's still a little tacky, but that's okay. Then we're gonna take modeling paste, which um, this is Liquitex modeling paste awesome deal. This was on one of the Hobby Lobby clearances and usually it's close to 25 bucks and I got it for $6.24. Wasn't that a good deal? Yeah, and of course, just like all my mixed media stuff, it's a little it's got some issues because I don't use it as much anymore. But, we're going to use it today. So, I'm going to just put a generous amount through my stencil of modeling paste. And the good thing is, is to do this technique, I don't have to wait for the modeling paste to dry. So, so if some of you have your mixed media stuff sitting here or there, you know, almost everything mixed media can be adapted to journals, I feel like. And it was kind of one of my unwritten goals this year to try and do more 
more mixed media with my um, with my journaling or my journal making I mean so so mixed media may is helping me out with that now I will tell you, you go through a little bit of, mo of modeling paste doing this because, you know, it's a 12 by 12. Of course you could do it on, um, on smaller paper too, though. You know, it doesn't have to be 12 by 12. I just like to have the options that the 12 by 12 gives me as far as what to do with it. Okay. Get in there. Just scrape, scrape, scraping. And I kind of go every direction just to make sure I fill I fill all the holes. But you know, if it's if you don't fill a hole, then it just has a more distressed look or something, I guess you could say. This is good though, cause I need to use my modeling paste so it doesn't get all dried and icky like it is on the corners. Okay, almost there. Okay. Okay, and I always, whenever I'm doing mixed media, I try and have some tags available because um, might as well make some tag bases with with leftovers is is how I feel about it all. So I'm just gonna clip the tops off of these tags. <clears throat> so that that doesn't get in the way. And remove this one. Okay, so now we are going to I hope I'm, I've been in frame the whole time. I think I have. So now I'm just going to remove the stencil. Holding down the paper while I pull it up. Okay. So now we've got our um, texture really there. And I, let's see. How am I going to do this? I need more hands. Um... I am going to lay this down here and then I'll show you. Okay, so I'm just going to set this aside for a second while we just use up the rest of our modeling paste. So this paper is another one of the ones and it's it's fine, but um, I'm just going to scrape a bit of my modeling paste off and it'll just make a little bit of texture on this piece of paper which I will use for something later I don't know what but something okay so let's just take a tag and put through some of that modeling paste that we scraped off I'm just using it up. That's all I'm doing. I, I don't want to waste it. So I'm just using it up on this little tag. But like I say, it's a good idea to have a tag, um, have some tags when you're doing mixed media stuff. It's just, I mean, because you might as well use up your product, right? Just being all sorts of uh, conservative with our products. Okay, so 
so there's there's a fun tag there's a fun bumpy tag okay i'm gonna set that aside and let's see i'm just gonna grab one more piece of paper here this one see i got got some Got some on there. Okay. One more scrape. Okay. That's getting kind of hard, but I'm going to try and put a little bit on a tag here. Just going to go right here. Not one to spread very much because it's getting getting harder. But I'll just be a little texture. That's fine. Okay, so now I'm just going to close up my modeling paste and we are going to clean up just a smidge. Because otherwise, it will get hard on here. So I have baby wipes at the ready, which is good. Now really, I should have had it like a tub of water or something, but you know... I've told you before, I'm not, I'm not the best mom to my stencils, but you know, <laughs> they work. Not a good mom to my sewing machine. I was a really good mom to my four kids though. <laughs> I say, don't ask them. <laughs> Who knows what they would say, right? Oh. Yeah, they could, they could maybe disagree, but, but I don't think so. They grew up to be pretty nice people, so I feel like we did okay. Yeah, it would be a lot easier with water. Oh, that's what I could do. Let me just grab my spray bottle here and I'll give it a little spray to give it a little extra moisture. Yeah, that's the ticket. And meanwhile, I'm putting a little texture on this piece of paper that's behind here. See, the where, isn't that kind of fun? That's kind of fun. Okay, um... Now I think I'm to the point where I can do it on this piece of paper and it'll be fine. Um, I just... This is one of my favorite stencils, so I would like to be able to would like to be able to use it again for without it have being all goobered up with um, modeling paste. So yeah, um, cleaning this is not part of the tutorial because it's not really the way you should do it, but you know it's going to work. Sometimes you got to do things quickly because you're on camera, so that's as quick as it's going to get. I feel like some of these holes are filled up from previous projects. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, good enough. Now I'm gonna set that aside to dry. Okay, so now let's get our piece of paper back. That all seemed like a sort of a detour, didn't it? It kind of was, but you know, so it goes. So all my draw papers are just these um, big calendar pages. Works great. Okay, so here is our our piece. Now I think I might see if I can grab purple real quick. Um, I kind of liked kind of liked how that looked. Okay, so your sprays, just a little uh, hint with the sprays. After you spray, like these are dilution sprays, once you spray, you want to wipe it off with a baby wipe right at the nozzle here because that will keep it from clogging up and then not spraying anymore. So, okay, so what I'm going to do is... Take my spray and I'm just gonna decide where I want it. I'm gonna spray my arm a little bit, a little on the hosier. I forgot to get that. Okay, so do as you said, Gail. So I'm just gonna wipe that off. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go a little of this. And running is good. Running is really good. So, okay. And I think I'll do a little of the purple. Whoops, forgot to wipe it. Gail, goodness. Okay, and then let's do this one. Okay. And, the, you know, the more you spray on, you know, I'm getting it thicker and thicker. And so, um, let's see, I might do one of those right in the middle too. And then let's go, let's go in with some green and see how we do with that. Ooh, fun. Just kind of trying to hit the spots where I don't have any color yet. Okay, now I just kind of want to run it around a little bit. Mm, how pretty is that? I love it. Okay, let's do our wipey wipe here. That is fun. Isn't that fun? Yeah, I think it's just, and, and it's easy. I mean, you gesso, you you put uh, modeling paste through a stencil, and you spray with dilution spray. I mean, how easy is that? And you get a gorgeous piece of paper. I would never have used the other one. And now I will use this. This is this is gorgeous. I really like the colors I used. Yay! Okay. So um, I'm going to put those away. I'm going to set this over to dry. And we're going to make some stuff out of the ones that I did a long time ago and, and you know, that are dry. So, okay. So I just want to... I'm going to move the whole thing here. Oh man, that's a pretty one. I like that one a lot. Okay, just get all my all my drop papers put together here. All right. Make some room, Gail. Okay. So oh, we have these. Wait. 
okay, what do we want to do with them? What you say, what can we do with them? Um, they can be covers. This one I want to be a cover, definitely. So I need to put something on the back. And I need to cut it 9 by 12. I need to kind of decide. I think I might like that to be the front page. So let's make a cover. And then we can make tags too. Look, it's only 25 minutes. We have lots of time to play. Um, I'm trying to decide what kind of paper I might like to have on the back. I think I'm going to do like another. This is not super thick so i think i might do another um thicker scrap of paper so i'm looking here i think i might use some of this this is um this is tattered walls this is a blue fern studios paper and I think I might be able to find one that would go really nice. And I've been wanting to play with this anyway. It's an older design. Let's see. Manuela Zimmerman designed this paper. But don't you think it might look nice with that? That might be nice on the back. What do you think? I think maybe. I think that's, I mean, nothing like the very first one you choose. Okay. So, we're going to need our cutter. How's my stencil doing? Oh, yeah. Looks just fine. Looks just fine. Let's use the cutter and, um, and get this cut size first. So, I want this to be nine inches tall. Like right there. So, let's see how we do going through the modeling paste. Just fine. Look, and we can do tags with that. Ooh, fun. Okay. Isn't that pretty okay so now I think I want to do this part up here so let's go nine inches on this pop that on the floor these mixed media um, things that I do and it takes me all afternoon to clean up afterwards okay so there we go there right um this one might be slightly longer but we can cut it off later if if, if it bothers us so this would be the inside this will be the outside oh i think i like that okay what i am gonna do is I'm just going to put some stick them down so it sticks in the middle so that I can sew it without it moving all over the place. You know, it's always good. Okay. Now I need to move my heat gun and get my sewing machine over here. I'm pretty good on thread in my sewing machine. Let's see. Can you guys see that? Yeah, you can. Um, I just wanted to give myself a little more room, but maybe I can. Maybe I can go there. Okay. Go, move back a little bit. I don't know. You guys, I ordered a new rolly cart. Thank you for the enabling, Martha. <laughs> it 
it's all because of Martha. No, it really isn't because, you know, I have shelves over here. And when I sew and stuff, um, I run into them and it drives me crazy. So Martha's trying to save my sanity. And um, and suggested I go on michaels.com and get myself another rolly cart because they're on sale right now. Okay, that's buckling a bit, which doesn't make me happy. Stop on the left and turn. What do we got going on? Oh, I have my sewing machine on, <laughs> on my thread. And these are well and good dry. I mean, these I made for a class years ago. So these are nice and dry. wouldn't want to sew on it with uh, wet um, modeling paste. That would not be good. One more. sewing machine out of the way for a second. Okay, where did I say this? I swear I said was going to be my top. So let's see how we do here. Giving this a fold. I do want to trim that slightly though. Just a tad different size than the other one. Ooh, I think this is going to make a fun cover for a nature journal or something like that. Okay, let's see how we do. Okay. Woohoo! Isn't that fun? That is fun. Okay, we've got to trim off the top bit. I That's a bit different too. But that's okay. I think we can do that. See how we do. It's cutting through the modeling paste. It's doing okay, so... We go sweet how fun is that and it feels so awesome because it's all bumpy okay so there's a cover made a cover just like that so let's make this into a couple of tags huh don't you think so we need to back it what would we like maybe I'll back it with um 
I was going to say I'll back it with straw paper, but I can't find any. Oh, there's some. I see. Yep. Nope, that's not straw paper. Okay. Talk amongst yourselves. Got it. Got it, got it. <clears throat> so, maybe we just want to glue that like so. Maybe we want to sew around these two. Okay. We can do that. Just give them a little bit more um, stability, right? Guess I don't have to get right to the edges because we're gonna sew them, right? Okay. And isn't this good? It's a it's a piece of paper that wouldn't have seen the light of day in a project, but you know, we do a little bit of adjusting to it and it just turns out just fine. Yeah, I love this. I really love this. Uh, I think on this one, maybe I didn't use the Dilution sprays. I think these might have been distress. What are they called? Um, are they distress inks? Distress inks. I have tattered angels. I have a variety of those from the mixed media days. Okay, and then gonna go six right because this is 12 so yep I'm gonna cut right there I'm just gonna be brave and do it and now I think what I'll do is make the tag part right here where there isn't any modeling paste that's that's what I'll do And these can be, you know, then a background, but they could just as easily stand alone. I think they're pretty all on their own. So whatever one wants to do. Oh, isn't that fun? Those are way fun. Okay, let's let's sew them up. I think I'm just gonna do um, just gonna do a straight stitch on these. Ooh, and what would be a fun tab on those? Um, I feel like maybe a muslin or something. Um. See what we have down here. See what we have. Maybe some of this kind of linen-y stuff. It's a bit thick. Love this gauzy stuff. Maybe we do that. Because I think it's about the right width. Say that. Um, scissors. Right here. On the wrong table. 
Oh yeah, that'll be nice. So I'm gonna put this about here. Just have a jaggedy old piece of stuff up here. Perfect. Those are cool. Isn't that fun? Can you see the texture to that? Oh, that's fun. This is like a crocodile skin. I really wanted my Australian accent to come out there, and it didn't. <laughs> I don't know. I can't do in this Australian accent. I can do a Southern. How about a gator? That was a gator skin. <laughs> I love Southern accents. I love Australian. I love any accent. Although people say I have an accent, but I, I guess I have a Montana accent, huh? I will, I, I, I don't hear it myself, but <laughs> I'm sure there's things I say that are definitely Montana-isms. Can't live somewhere your whole life and not pick up something, huh? So I'm thinking I might keep these tags with that cover because they would obviously be kind of fun in that journal. But I also think these would be cool in a Tim Holtz journal too. Um, just because of the colors, you know, and the sort, sort of grunginess. There we go. So let me go get... Um, the one that we made and show you the colors. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. And the um, the spray has begun to dry. It's almost completely dry except where it's puddled, but the um, modeling paste isn't gonna be dry for a while. So, but this will be super fun in a spring journal, I think. So I hope you guys enjoyed this um, kind of, uh, what would you say, trying to, tr trying to save the, uh, save the uh, um, ugly paper sort of a thing. We should do those tags. We have a few minutes. Let's do these. These are dry too. Um, let's just spray these, shall we? Okay, I'm going to set this aside and dry. Okay, I'm going to grab a couple of sprays. Uh, let's see. What do I have? Um,
Sorry, guys. I was gone a long time there. I'm sorry. I was just trying to grab something that I hadn't played with yet. Um, so, this one, let's just try a variety of greens on it. So I haven't tried these bottles, so hopefully, yep. They do work. And then there's a green green. Oh, my dog is barking upstairs. He doesn't bark in the house. That's so weird. I was like, ooh, that one comes out as a shot. Wow. Okay. Well, that one was was funky. Just dripping with drippage happening. Okay, and then this one was the one I think we used on the other one. So it should work. now I feel like I got too much of that. I need a little bit more turquoise. <laughs> Let's spray some at the top and see if we can make it run. Ooh, that's cool. A little bit more right there. Okay, I'm gonna leave that to dry now. That was fun. And then I was thinking about how about some turquoise and some pink on this one. This one's funky, it's just right there is all. But let's see how we do. See if I can get that to run. Yeah, it's running up the tag. Okay, that one's pretty too, huh? Okay. Well, other than the couple of pieces of paper that have a little bit of texture on them, we, we pretty much used up everything we worked with today. We got some sweet drop paper action happening. So, okay. Well, now I'll be done playing. <laughs> now I will, now I will stop. And oh, if you are cleaning these and you're doing a bunch of spraying, keep your baby wipes because they become really fun texture for other projects. Oh, I love being a little inky. Coffee dyed fingers. <laughs> Inky, it's been a good day. Okay, everybody. Well, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks for joining me. And I hope this was fun for you and something different. So we'll just see you in the next video. Have a grateful day. Bye, everybody.